There we go. Or by the powers that be. If I leave off one question from the analysis, how many points would I lose? Uh, if you don't answer it at all, so if you leave it blank, uh, you'll lose seven points across the board. You'd have negative one written next to it, so you lose at six points possible, uh, and you get negative one, so you lose seven points. Oh. Last left off with rotational motion, I believe. But are there any questions? Uh, for the work uh, energy work energy theorem, when can we say it was when the initial energy and the final energy is equal to each other? Because we said if displacement is zero, the net force is zero, and then the other one, what was the other rule again? It says something about perpendicular. If the non-conservative force is perpendicular to the ground. The motion. The motion. In essence, the velocity. Okay. So a rock falling would not be equal to each other. Why? Because if the desired motion is this way, and then the non-conservative force is up, they're not perpendicular. No air resistance. There's no air resistance. Okay, so what's the cause? What's the non-conservative force upwards? Though? The normal force, and then what's it hitting? Okay. Well, oh, wait, never mind. It's just weight, and then yeah, and then the motion is going down, so they're parallel to each other, right? Yep. So that would mean they're not. So that so that does not prove like initial energy equals final energy, right? Because because weight is a conservative force. Okay. Energy is conservative. It's, it's if a non conservative force is doing work that they're not the same. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Any other questions? rotational motion and we derived the formula for the moment of inertia. I think that's the last thing. Derive? Yeah, derive. What's going on? The generic formula, the I is equal to the sum of the MR squares. You don't have that there. Yeah, we only, you only told us the moment of inertia for a phase shape. Yeah. But I didn't tell you why any rationale. No. We didn't do kinetic energy of a, of a rotating object? I think we did that. That's the kr equals one and a half pi w squared. Yeah. We did that part. But we didn't show how we got that. I think we did, yeah. We did. Yeah, we did that. We did that part. Okay. Of it. Yes. So going through that, that's when we got that moment of inertia is equal to the sum of m sub i r sub i squared. So you break an object up into it. Mathematically, you break it up into an infinite number of pieces. And just add up all those tiny little masses times the distance squared. All right, so I have two objects here, roughly the same diameter. This weighs more than this does. Uh, this is metal, this is some sort of polymer. If I race them against each other, which one would get to the bottom first? Alright, uh, 
So, who says that the solid one will make it down first? One. Who says the hoop will make it down first? One. <laughs> I tie. I'm not forcing you to choose that one. I'm just trying to figure out what your answer is. Are you going to go for neither, or were you just planning I'm not to go say? For neither. You're going for neither. The first being the flames. Okay. All right. Making sure that's not too biased there. Start them off with the same. All right. Anyone willing to bet your grade on this? No. <laughs> Oh, no. Not this class. <laughs> I should have bet it. Well, that one made it down first. I should have made the bet, then I? Let's just make sure that uh, there's not board bias, because sometimes the board is a little tilted, which messes it up. This one's better than the one I usually use. Both times, this one made it down first. And I guess the initial question is why? Because the non-hollow disc is has a lot more mass, so it went faster. Yeah. That has more mass than the other one. Or yeah, equal. Yeah. Oh. Um, the center of gravity is different. Center of gravity is about in the middle. The hollow one has it in the middle too. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean, even though I cannot put my finger on it, right. the center of mass is. I'm assuming this thing is built, designed so that it's even, evenly distributed around that edge. Can you? Sorry, I was just taking a break. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I accidentally like, pulled it. It's like I um, pulled it. Okay. Can you stack them on each other? Are they equal in diameter? Uh, they are close. I wind <laughs> resistance in the middle. There's what are you asking for, Margaret? Surface area. Uh, this does have more surface area in contact than this one does. So you're speculating surface area makes a difference? Yes. I think it has something to do with moment of inertia. With what? Moment of inertia. Hmm. <laughs> well, those, if I like, like my answer more. All right, so I took these two. Yeah. Well, the, this has more mass. These are the same material. This, so it's, because it's the same material, same density, this is bigger. This has more mass. Mm -hmm. This has more surface area, if you're counting around that part. All right, so big, small. Who says big? I'm still thinking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think big too. Could that, even though the difference in their diameters are very small, could that have affected how fast they're going because of the linear speed? Wait, say that again? The even if there's a, the, the, the difference in diameter between the hollow one and the, and the one they were about to use, their diameters are have a bit of difference. Yeah. Could that have affected the linear speed like that drastically so that the thicker one has more speed than the other one? So if, it, well, let's just speculate for right now. So if this one was slightly bigger and it went faster, so part of your speculation then using that reasoning is that this should be faster than this. Yeah. Significantly. I mean, mm -hmm. That should spin faster but move, but have less distance traveled. Does that make sense? Is this the classic marathon the, the short people have less mass and the tall people have longer legs. You so. could say that, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got small, large, tight. Let's just go ahead and drop neither. Let's assume that they will not burst into flames on the way down. All right, Margaret, have you considered? All right, so we have two for the big one. And then Margaret, which one are you going for? The big one. Big one. So all three of you for the big one. And if you will, you bet your grades. No, thank you. <laughs> for an A? For an A, like for the whole class. How much are you willing to bet? Hmm. How much? It's A if you're right, F if you're wrong. That, that's the way I'm picturing the, the bet. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Could it be a beach? I'm guessing you're not willing to. No, no. <laughs> So surface area does not seem to have an effect. Diameter does not seem to have an effect. Huh. Do the mass have something in effect? The mass? Well, this has more mass. And it was a tie. This had more mass, but this one. It's the shape. What about it? Well, there's a big hole in that one. <laughs> there is. Okay. All right, so uh, let's just take these two. This one weighs more. This is, I think, a, aluminum or some alloy. It's, uh, it's significantly lighter than this is. Or noticeably, I should say. Uh, this one's fatter. Which one will make it down first? Same tie. Got a tie? Same. Another tie? No, that one. This one? Uh -huh. so, I'm just going to introduce my lightning quick speed to stop it. <laughs> Can I tell you my answer? Yes. <laughs> the lighter one. This one? Yes. Is on, on the right track with what she had said in terms of the general concept, but the rationale. Why would this one win over this one? Or, I guess we raked them. This is the fastest, next, and the slowest. Mm -hmm. Aren't the rings of the black one bigger than the silver one? The rings of the yeah, like uh, the, as in that is thicker than that is. Could that have done anything? Because it all went faster, but it's like a whole the whole thing is filled. Right. The black the other black one is like has the rings bigger in diameter than the silver one. And that could have a relationship between how fast it is, right? So if I did these two let's see. The thickness, that thickness right there is about similar to that thickness there. Unfortunately, it's not, but in terms of just absolute thickness, it, it might be slightly bigger, but which one do you think would win that one? Please don't mind. I have no idea. I say but, tie for now. You say the tie for now? Yeah. But that, what is that one made of? Uh, I think the same material. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, I would say the bigger one. Yeah, the bigger one. So bigger, bigger. Yeah. And I say tie. Tie. Oh, what? I don't understand anything. I get it wrong every time. Wait, so <laughs> size and the diameter? No? Size and diameter are not a key issue here. Damn, that's wrong. <laughs> All right, let's write up some formulas here. So going with what Prathikas said, it has something to do with moment of inertia. So let's see, solid disk, otherwise known as a cylinder, is one half m r squared. And in the tradition of this, capital M would represent the mass of the entire object. Lower K, uh, capital R is the radius of the sphere, as opposed to little m and little r, which is for an individual piece of it. Uh, let's see, the hoop. I guess if it's a very thin hoop, 
that's thin hoop is m r squared. If it is a thick hoop, it's one half m r one squared plus r r inner squared plus r outer squared. Let me take a moment just to think about that. Is that a plus in the middle? That's a plus in the middle. This is completely thin. Okay, so not like the other way. Right. Because if it were, if you let the inner and outer radius become closer and closer to each other, then these are practically the same value. So that I have two times the radius squared times the one half would give us this formula here. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have a sphere down there. I for a solid sphere is two fifths in R squared. All right. If I raised this against this, which one would make it down first? The black one. No, the ball. So we got two for this one, one for this one. Now, Margaret, you said that with great confidence. Did you have a rationale for it, or is it just gut feeling? It just makes sense in my head. Okay. Because like it can just like keep rolling. It doesn't have like a straight path. I love that the equations. Two fifths is a lot bigger than one half. No, one half is bigger than two fifths. So. Yeah. And then there's a relationship between the amount like. If I just make up some random numbers in my head, I know like the I thick hoop will be bigger than the I solid disc because of the R squared. And then I know the thin hoop would be going faster than the solid disc because there's no one half. So I, that's why I said the black one. Because it has a larger, basically, fraction up front? Yeah. Stop. It's the fraction up front. Now, first off, in order to know which has the greater moment of inertia, we would actually need to calculate it. But it's that fraction up front which is the most important bit. So let's actually run through a, a problem and show why that fraction is so important. Even though the mass doesn't seem to matter and the radius doesn't seem to matter. So I've got the ramp, all on ramp. That's a ball on a ramp, some angle theta. So first off, let's talk about force diagram. What are the forces acting on the ball? Is it frictionless? No, if it were frictionless, it would not hold. Okay, so the friction is acting to the top left, and then weight is acting towards down, and then normal force is acting perpendicular to the ramp. Okay. If energy is conserved, uh, we need to somehow rationalize my new not my two non-conservative forces not actually doing any work. So if we think about the movement of this spot right here, if it's rolling, which in which direction is that spot going to move immediately? Back. Pardon? Back. Sit back? Yeah, like. I, I have the thing spinning around like this. Oh, back as in yeah. that way? Yeah. 
If it were doing that, then we have parts of this, as it rolls, parts of it slipping backwards. And it actually does not move in that direction. Would friction be acting through the ball? No, friction is acting that way. Oh, so. That, that part was correct. Because if it were frictionless, that ball would, or whatever rolling object would just slide like that. So at the point of contact, yeah. it wants to slide this way, so friction acts the other way. Seen those pictures of uh, a light twirling, as uh, like a, a light on a tire or something like that. What's the shape of that? Circle. For a car that's driving by. Uh, uh, not quite that extreme, but it actually does this. It's a work got a picture of my office. I'm gonna have to look at the video. Pardon? I'm gonna go look at the video. Okay. So what's happening here is that point right there actually lifts up. This point is gonna go that way. Now, you might go, okay, so the normal force is doing work, but recognize the, the, the distance that it's being, the distance from surface to not being on the surface is infinitesimally small. That normal force only acts on it while it's touching the surface. So, because the displacement in that direction is so incredibly tiny, this normal force is not doing any work. Because the displacement here is perpendicular to the friction, it's not doing any work. Friction's not doing any work. So the only thing doing work is the weight, and therefore it's conserved. Energy is conserved. Wait, can you explain the friction again? This point right here, where the friction is acting and the normal force is acting, is going to move in that direction. So, F, uh, she's still using the wheel. 